Well, the only thing that makes a midweek Wednesday uh, more enjoyable is a visit from the Crown Prince of Pickerel, the Baron of Burbot, the Wizard of Walleye, Jason Maddity from Maddity'sGoodFishing.com. Uh, good morning to you. Good, sir. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Marvelous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Fall's a great time of the year. Yes, we we're just talking yeah. about that. You, 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 on the lake at this time of the year, you've lost the casual guy, the guy that's out there splitting a six-pack with his buddy that's just trying to get away from his wife. These are the people that are on the lake now that are serious, they mean business, and they know what they're doing, in theory. Well, yes, you know, it, 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 the crowds are starting to thin out, there's no question. Obviously, when we have warm weekends like we had uh, last weekend, there's still a, quite a few players out on the lake, but by the time the hunting season starts and by the time it starts to cool, the, the crowds get thinner, but the fishing gets hotter as it starts to cool down. So what are we, uh, what are we generally fishing for this time of the year in Saskatchewan's lakes and rivers? Well, uh, all the predator fish that, that are out there, they're feeding up for winter. Um, and, and as we get colder and colder to that tipping point where it snows and we struggle to get above zero for our daily highs, the, the feed just keeps getting heavier and heavier. And what a lot of people don't really think about is that you want to go with big lures, uh, especially for pike and especially for walleye. And the cool thing is the cool water has brought those big predators into shallower water again. Mm -hmm. Just like we talked about in the spring, they went deep in the summer because it got too warm, but now they're back in the shallow. So everybody has access to them from boat or, or from, from the, the shoreline. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as far as the lures themselves are concerned, uh, anything that kind of changes at this time of the year? Yeah, like uh, we tend to want to go with some of the biggest ones we have. Like this uh, is a wonderful uh, BX swim lure from Rapella, one of our uh, sponsors for our show. And uh, the th cool thing about this one is it's jointed, Chris. And <clears throat> what that means is even though the fishing is hot and the fish are aggressive, you still want to present it slowly, like just slowly reel it in and methodically, but it doesn't take much effort to get action on that. Whereas the hard baits, the ones that don't, you know, have the bend in the middle, mm -hmm. you have to bring them a little faster to get the action. So that's why the jointed works so well at this time of year. I wouldn't have thought that there, there would have been that kind of uh, level of research and development into, into the world of fishing lures. You wouldn't believe the amount of fishing and research that goes into these things, possibly for marketing, but possibly also at the end of the day to catch more fish. And uh, and it's it's that subtle little difference. Not it's not that these don't work at other times of the year, but right. it's it's really important, especially for those bigger fish. Like a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to reel really fast. I'm going to move my rod tip all over the place and get this thing going all squirrely in the air. And sometimes that's a good idea, but at this time of year, especially for bigger fish, mm -hmm. they're going to miss it. Like, uh, you'll just run it under the surface, they'll come up and bite it, but if you're pulling it all over the place, uh, especially those 20 pound pike, they don't have that kind of ability to turn tightly, that, right? That, right? So you gotta make it real easy for them, <clears throat> and you just bring it methodically over their head, and they just can't resist it after a while, and whammo. Now, when you're talking about uh, the big uh, the big pike, uh, it changes some of the tools of the trade with regards to uh, hook removal, and uh, these are lessons that everybody learns at least once in their life, and once it happens to you, you'll never uh, you'll never make the same mistake twice. Absolutely. If you're targeting pike, which we're obviously talking about today, you want to have your three main pe you know tools along, and that is your standard needle nose pliers, so you can get you know right in there and keep your hands away from the teeth, because pike are very very toothy predators. And the other one is th these are jaw spreaders. They open quite wide, and uh, what it does is you just open opens up their mouth, so you can get in there with the tools. Yeah, and it keeps your hands out of those teeth, right? Super big ones we've caught before, they'll actually close these on you. So you might want to give them a second to get used to the idea of those being in there. But it's really important not only for the health of the fish to get that hook out, but the health of you. Because what happens is if it's in the corner of the mouth, you inevitably go in with your hand, and that's when you get injured. And these ones, of course, are to cut line if, if that hook is embedded too deeply. Just a couple seconds left, Jason. If people are looking for you in the digital world, where do we find you on the web? Manatees.getfishing.com, 24 hours a day in any country on planet Earth. And uh, by all means, uh, check it out and let us know what you think. You can tell us, too. Fantastic stuff. Thanks again. As always, we'll see you again. Sounds good.